I'd like to be remembered as an innovator. Um, I think it was General MacArthur said, you're remembered for the rules you break. And you know, I've broken some rules to make this. I think I've broken them with, with logic and good engineering behind me, the carbon fiber and titanium. There's a rule you don't do that. Well, I did. Ocean Gate Expeditions offers you the once in a lifetime opportunity to be a specially trained crew member safely diving to the Titanic wreckage site. Get ready for what Jules Verne could only imagine. A 12,500 foot journey to the bottom of the sea. It's the Ocean Gate Titanic experience. It's been an amazing engineering feat. It was five years ago that Stockton Rush christened the Titan, described as the largest pressure vessel ever made. It performed amazing feats diving to the bottom of the Atlantic, but this time something went wrong and experts had feared the worst. Hi guys. Today we're talking about the potentially last words that were heard from the Titan submarine that imploded in the ocean on its way to the Titanic. The Titanic still fascinates many people and so understandably everything that happens around this shipwreck that lies more than 12,500 feet or 3,800 meters deep on the floor of the ocean. So what would you do if you had $250,000 to spend for stuff like that, going down and see the wreck? Would you have gone down with a small sub like this, a teeny tiny matchbox? And it's operated by a private company called OceanGate. I founded OceanGate in 2009 with the goal of expanding awareness of the ocean through man's submersible activity. The reason that it's critical that people go underwater and explore the ocean in person in a submarine is that it establishes an emotional context and a awareness that is personal. With a not so great track record when it comes to the success of their trips going down to the Titanic. In a latest report, it has been revealed that of the 90 attempts that they have, been, that they have made, to reach the depth of the Titanic wreck, the Titan only managed to succeed 13 times, which adds up to a success rate of only 14%. I mean, think about it, 14%. Would you go down there? I mean, let's say you're not scared about risking your life with that thing, but 14% success rate, you sit there in that matchbox with five other people, no washroom, like, the thing they had was even worse than a porta potty, I believe, with, with just a curtain and then they turned on music. So would you do that when the success rate is so low? Um, I certainly wouldn't. So before they went down there, the passengers were required to acknowledge and sign a statement, which was part of a four page waiver. And some of it said, for example, a portion of the expedition will be conducted inside an experimental, experimental submersible vessel that will dive 3,800 meters to the shipwreck of the Titanic. The experimental submersible vessel has not been approved or certified by any regulatory body and is constructed of materials that have not been widely used for manned submersibles. So they make you sign this. This is not really great. <laughs> but whatever, if you after the thrill and you want to do that, what can I say? So let's look into what happened. A former employee, he was a director of marine operations at the Ocean Gate Company, David Lockridge. He claimed that there was a lack of non-destructive testing performed on the Titan's hull. And when he raised concern about this issue as early as 2018, he was fired, ignored. On the last trip of the Titan, the Ocean Gate submarine lost contact with its mothership about an hour and 45 minutes into the trip down to nearly 13,000 feet in the North Atlantic to see the wreckage of the Titanic. And just now, an unconfirmed script was leaked online documenting the shocking 
last 20 minutes of the passengers in the sub. The script alleges to reveal the last conversation between the Titan sub and its support ship, the Polar Prince. For the sub that was carrying five passengers to the site of the Titanic wreckage is believed to have imploded, killing all passengers on board. I have to tell you guys, if that transcript is true, then it's different from what they first said Basically, all oh, it imploded and it went so fast, they weren't even scared, they didn't even notice what happened. Because this transcript shows that the crew spent about the last 20 minutes of their lives in horror and fear, as they knew that something was very wrong and the most scary alarms were going off. Also, the transcript reveals that the sub was most likely descending too fast. So we will read through that script in a minute. The Titan sub was a tourist submersible operated by the private company Ocean Gate. The sub lost communication with the Polar Prince while descending to the site of the wreck of the Titanic on the morning of June 18th. For days after that, rescuers raced against the time to locate the vessel and save the five passengers on board before they would run out of oxygen. But unfortunately, on June 22nd, authorities reported that all passengers had likely died immediately when the vessel imploded during the descent. The transcripts that now surfaced were first posted on TikTok and Twitter. It's not clear whether the so-called transcript is real or fake, and research about it has proved inconclusive. But um, yeah, you might think, why have they not been officially released if they're, if they're true? It's very well possible that this transcript was meant to be kept a secret until further investigations are conducted. But it could very well be that it was leaked by people who had access to it, people on the Polar Prince or engineers who have passed it on to friends or other engineers and asking for their opinion, for example, right? So let's look at the full transcript of this unconfirmed conversation. At 7.52 in the morning, the Polar Prince clear for descent, enjoy the ride. That's what they messaged to the sub. The Polar Prince is a vessel on top of the ocean uh, trying to monitor what's going on down there with the Titan. At 7.54, Titan says, descending now. At 7.58, Titan says, launch sequence complete, ready. Polar Prince answers, all clear. And at 8.01 a.m., Titan says, proceeding. At 8.03, the Polar Prince tells them, enjoy the dive, gentlemen. At 8.19, the Polar Prince tells them, you're 15 minutes into the dive, current depth systems check, please. So they're asking for the data that the sub reads. At 8.21, the Titan responds, systems check complete, all in order, all lights are green, we are 7.56 proceeding. So they're meaning they're at a depth of 756 meters. So various experts think that they were diving too fast and that 756 meters is too far down just after 20 minutes of descent. Usually in um, when they went down to the Titanic uh, wreckage, they need about two and a half hours to descend to descend to a depth of 3,800 meters. So when you do the math, they should be descending at a speed of about 25 meters per minute. So now, after roughly 20 minutes, they should only be at a depth of only about 500 meters. So at 8.22, the Polar Prince answers, thank you, proceed. So why were they not concerned about the depth? They should have noticed. They should have systems that alarm them. It's very strange. At 8.34, the Polar Prince says, 30 minutes in, update, please. 8.34, Titan says, all systems are functioning normally. We're in good shape. 
continuing our descent as planned. 8.36, the polar prince replies, superb, proceed. At 8.49, the polar prince gets in contact, says, over 45 minute mark, current depth confirmed status. 8.51, Titan replies, depth at 1,934. All systems stable and descent continuing as planned, happy crew. So after 50 minutes, they're 1,934 meter deep. But if you do the math, they should only be 50 minutes by 25 meters per minute. They should only be 1,250 meters deep. So we're having a 684 meter difference here. So the polar prince just replies at 8.52, excellent. Again, not worried about the Titan's depth. At 9.01, the polar prince signals to the Titan, you're at the hour mark. 9.02, Titan responds, all is smooth sailing here. 9.15, the polar prince sends out a message, you are at 75 minutes depth status do you need to adjust velocity so now they're asking the sub whether they need to adjust speed does that mean they are concerned about the rapid ascent if so why did they not ask that earlier why now they don't even have the new depth yet so that means they were concerned about the old depth so why haven't they said anything earlier 9 17 a.m titan says all under control at 2960 no adjustments needed we're enjoying the ride so they're in one hour and 16 minutes of diving they should be at a depth of if you do the math 76 minutes times 25 meters per minute at about 1900 meters so there are over a thousand meters a thousand sixty meters too deep too fast what strain does that put on the sub's materials? So at 9.19, Polar Prince responds, understood, understood. Hmm. 9.28 a.m., the Titan says, we're noting an alarm from the RTM. That's the real-time monitoring system. Now, this is really scary, really, really scary. What is an RTM according to the company Ocean Gate? They say Ocean Gate's submersibles are the only known vessels to use real time RTM hull health monitoring. With this RTM system, we can determine if the hull is compromised well before situations become life threatening and safe, safely return to the surface. This innovative safety system is not currently covered by any classing agency. Guys, imagine what was going through the passengers' heads now with that alarm going off. At this sub, so small, everyone must heard and seen the alarm as well as the conversation with the polar prince. I think this is the moment when I would think, damn, I should not have done that. I should not have gone into that sub. And I'm pretty sure they all felt the fear rising in their bodies and the fear taking over. Our body systems are very good at giving us an internal alarm when your life is in danger. But when you're in a tiny box, about 2000 meters underwater, there's nothing you can do yourself. You can't just jump out and say, bye bye, I swim to the surface, you guys do what you're doing. And I think this realization hit them quickly and they must have been terrified. Even, even I myself feel the pressure on my chest right now by just thinking about the situation that they were facing down there. At 9.28, the Titan crew is reacting. They tell the Polar Prince, reducing velocity descent depth 3,433. So after 88 minutes, they are 3,433 meters deep, 1,200 meters deeper than they should be, and one full hour, one full hour early. They were only 400 meters away from the Titanic. They were not able to see the Titanic because everything's super dark down there. So you have to be very close to the Titanic 
um, to shine some lights on it to be able to see it. But imagine this 400 meters. So 1200 meters too deep. Why was this not noticed earlier by either the Titan crew or the Polar Prince? At 928, the Polar Prince response understood, do you need to ascend? At 9.30 a.m. Titan response, no change with thrust. The rate of descent is increasing. At 35, going to release the ballast now. Stand by. Something seriously wrong. Seriously wrong. They're basically sinking at a high speed. It's not a controlled descent anymore. That's what it sounds to me. At 9.30, the Polar Prince response, yes, agree, release the ballast. 932 Titan response no improvement preparing to jettison the frame so the sub has some frame around it that obviously they don't seem to need 933 polar prince affirmative update when able RTM indicator status so they're asking for the RTM that reads the the hull the security of the hull and the stability of the hull 9.35, Titan response. Frame jettisoned, multiple attempts needed, but starting the ascent now. 9.36, Polar Prince seems to be surprised. Multiple attempts, what is your status? RTM indicators, depth. So they are concerned now about the depth and they are concerned that something's seriously wrong with the hull if you believe the RTM indicators. And we don't know how much ahead of time this RTM tells you that something is wrong and how much time you have left. I don't think uh, they, they knew that themselves. All the polar prints knew they need to ascend in that quickly. I read a grave concern in the message of the polar prints operator. Something seems to be wrong with the system so that they are not able to ascend properly. At 9.37, the Polar Prince asks again, update, please, when able. So, and this is, the, what's coming now is the fatal answer to me. This is the most shocking and scary part of this transcript. So at 9.38, Titan responds, crackling sound at aft, crackling. So... We have an RTM alarm that tells us something's wrong with the hull. And now we hear a crackling sound. Imagine what the people must have gone through at that moment. I want to quickly tell you what is happening if a submarine dives too fast. If it dives too fast, it can create problems with the submarine's operation and potentially affect the submarine's ability to navigate safely near underwater shelves or other underwater structures. Here are a few potential problems that could arise. Structural stress. Submarines are designed to withstand the pressure of deep sea environments. However, rapid changes in depth can subject the submarine to significant structural stress. Diving too fast could exceed the submarine's structural limits, leading to damage or even catastrophic failure. Remember when the Titan said that they're releasing ballast, what does that mean? What ballast? So they're not throwing out any suitcases or something like that. Um, submarines maintain their depth by controlling their buoyancy. They adjust the amount of water in ballast tanks to control their ascent or descent. If a submarine dives too quickly, it may have difficulty controlling ex its buoyancy and maintaining a stable depth. This could result in the submarine descending too far or resurfacing too rapidly potentially leading to collisions or other navigational hazards near underwater shelves. Also, what are the human factors of diving too fast? Rapid changes in depth can subject the crew to significant psychological stresses, such as decompression sickness or nitrogen narcosis. These conditions can impair judgment, coordination, and cognitive functions, potentially leading to errors in navigation or operation. The question is, did they dive so fast that this could have affected the humans? But definitely it 
seems it has affected the stability and the hull of the submarine. Let's continue with the transcript. So Titan responded crackling sound at aft. Polar Prince response, can you identify the source? RTM indicator status. 9.40 a.m. Titan responds, negative. At 9.40, the Polar Prince asks again, RTM status. So they are very concerned about this. This is my dog, Rudy, by the way, who's not supposed to be where he is right now, but he's so curious. So um, if you're interested in what he's doing, I have a lot of videos and shorts on my channel. Okay, at 9.42, the Titan says, trying to run diagnostics, ascending now, but very slow. Sounds have subsided. Global RTM alert, active, all red. So even Rudy's giving the alarm here. So they can't run diagnostics, as it seems. They're ascending, but very, very slow. They're ma not making much meters. The sounds have gone, but everything's still red that's not good so did they think the red lights just remained and nothing to worry about because the sounds were gone or were they fully aware what was about to happen it scares me to just think about what might have gone through their heads at this time 9 42 a.m the polar prince says understood any codes depth ascent rate to me, this sounds very concerned. Polar Prince at 9.43, updates when able, please. So the Polar Prince keeps asking for RTM updates. They must have been super, super concerned. At 9.42, the Titan answers. Slow ascent in progress, quarter predicted. Unclear why rate is small, no indicator. At 3,476, aiming for the surface. So when they noticed the problem, they were 3,433 meters deep. But they, since then, they sunk even deeper to 3,476 meters. So this tells you something. 944, the Polar Prince asks, we're talking it over with the engineer, stand by. 945, Polar Prince, depth and status, please. What's the wattage on upwards thrust? So now the next scary message occurs. They have lost their main power source and seem to have switched to a backup system. At 946, the Titan responds, reading red on the A power bus. I switched to B at 3,457 meters, more sounds aft. So the sounds are back. They were able to ascend a few meters in the last two and a half minutes, but way too slow, slower than normal. And from here, unfortunately, the Titan's fate seems to be sealed. At 9.47, the Polar Prince says, understood, continue ascent. Talking to Carlos about power bus station right now, stand by. At 9.48, the Polar Prince says, we are activating recovery procedures. Carlos is requesting wattage outpoint from bus B. Status update, please. Velocity of ascent. 9.50, Polar Prince asks again, we're not receiving you. Update, please. 9.51, Polar Prince. Status and depth report. 9.53, Polar Prince. We need you to respond with status and depth. Carlos is requesting wattage update on thrusters. 9.55, Polar Prince. We are unable to read you. We are moving to recovery coordinates. Re report if you read. At 9.57, Polar Prince asks again, please respond if you're able. So after 9.46 a.m., there was no further contact to the Titan. Wreckage parts were recovered a few days later, and an expert said it was impossible to be certain by just looking at the photos, but the carbon fiber hull most likely gave way under the enormous pressure of the ocean depth to the, and the sub imploded. All five passengers on board the Titan, including the Ocean Gate CEO, Stuckton Rush, 
died during the incidents. Since then, the US Coast Guard has said that presumed human remains had also been recovered. The other passengers on the sub were British billionaire Hamish Harding, British Pakistani Shahzada Dawood, his 19-year-old son Suleiman, and French sub-pilot and explorer Paul Henry Nargelet. Given the fact that the CEO of Oceangate stuck in rush risk and lost his own life, he must have really believed in the safety of his sub. And he ignored pleas from others in the industry that what he was doing was unsafe. What was he thinking? We will never know. And just on a side note, uh, the deepest depth that a submarine has ever gone was during a four-hour exploration of the Mariana Trench. Retired Naval Officer Victor Vescovo piloted his submarine to 10,927 meters. That's 35,849 feet below the sea's surface, making it the deepest dive on record. Guys, if you like this video, um, it would be awesome if you could subscribe and support my channel. There's more videos about this topic um, coming. There's more revelations that I have found. And uh, have a look at my channel. There's a lot of other stuff about recent news, recent weird news mostly. And if you're interested in these doggies, I have a lot of shorts that document my life with dogs, my life working on a farm. And yeah, guys, if you made it that far, thanks for watching. I hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and check out the videos here in the screen. Thank you very much and bye-bye.